I'm Nebecca, creator of Gehenna Death Valley, and you're listening to True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book and graphic novel creators and supporters. I'm John Swinimer. On this episode, I chat with Rebecca about her comic book projects and future plans at Toronto Comic Con 2024. This podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. Toronto Comic Con is a spectacular three-day sci-fi, horror, anime, gaming, and comic book event in Canada that attracts thousands of people to come to the Metro Toronto Convention Centre. The Becca is an award-winning cartoonist and freelance artist based in southwestern Ontario. She started out color flatting for various comic book artists, and in her spare time, she created her own comics and art. Best known for the award-winning horror comic Gehenna Death Valley, which won the 2020 Joe Schuster Award for the Gene Day Award, which was successfully crowdfunded on Kickstarter. She was recently nominated for work on The Wormhole Club Tragedy, issue 1, Issues 2 and 3 of the Wormhole Club Tragedy are available now. So without further ado, here's my chat with The Becca about her comic book projects and future plans at Toronto Comic Con 2024. So The Becca, how are you doing today? Everything good? Yeah, everything's good. Thanks Super. for having me again, John. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really do appreciate it. I know you're busy doing cons and uh, all sorts of festivals and stuff, but I want to you know, get in, in touch with you before Toronto Comic Con comes along. So uh, yeah, no, I appreciate your time. But before I get to all the questions, I would like to know, what are you reading today? What am I reading today? I guess a lot of nonfiction, just articles lately, just for researching things. <laughs> Uh, any any particular subject matter or just, just random stuff? Just random stuff. More for research for what I'm making right now. Ah, very good. Okay. We'll yeah. say no more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All good. All good. Well, we're talking today because you will be tabling at the Toronto Comic Con 2024. So with that in mind, I'd like to know what is it about conventions that you like the most? It's just meeting new people. Like I say this as an introvert, so that's weird. But like... Um, people who have genuine interest in what you're doing and also it's cool when people pick up your work and it's not familiar but they're really interested and they end up buying it you know that's always fine and it's good to see uh, friends too absolutely yeah it's a great opportunity to rub shoulders and all that sort of good stuff for sure for sure now you've been to a lot of conventions and festivals in the past i'm wondering do you have any special moments or memorable moments that stand out Oh, man, it's hard to say because like every show is different, you know, so it's it always changes. You know, I can't think of one specific moment that stands out like usually I'm surprised. I was just thinking today about sketch duels. I'm scheduled for one on the Friday at the end of the day, a schedule mania. But I remember when I did my first one years ago before the pandemic, and I was certain that I would never be asked to do a sketch duel ever again because I bombed that one so badly. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But no, I'm just like, wow, I... I don't know how many of these things I've done since then, you know, (laughs) to... Mm -hmm. So I've slowly redeemed myself and and actually enjoy doing the sketch battles or sketch duels. Definitely way less nervous than I used to be, for sure. I'm sure. So that yeah. always surprises me. Yeah, it's yeah. always a fun thing, I think, for people to watch you in action, I think, right? Is is that pretty much the whole deal? It's like, okay, there's two formidable artists here on stage. See who can, you know, do the art the best, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> or to a certain time period. Uh, is that how it works? Yeah, it's usually like there's a theme and or topic. Uh, st- traditional sketch battles, like someone from the audience yells out the artist to draw something. Um, and they draw it it depends like how long the sketch battles are too so the first one I did that was the most terrifying because uh, we did two drawings within that within the 45 minutes and I tend to be a bit slower or at least I think I am a bit slower but the last sketch mania I did on a live stream I managed to make two drawings for that so I'm like oh okay I guess my speed is going up or (laughs) something (laughs) Going in front of an audience terrifies me. So I have these mixed emotions of like, okay, I'm drawing, but then 
I'm in front of an audience and there's this extra pressure added on. This is me like the first time going up there where the schedule mania stuff, like I know the people who are behind it. I know Martin Slam Duncan, who mm-hmm. usually hosts the battles, you know, and I think doing the live streams have helped ease my way into doing it in real life, sure. you know, in front of yeah. a live audience, I mean, as yeah. opposed to just doing it online. So right. Yeah, so I'm more comfortable these days going up oh, there. Sure, and it's lots of fun. That's it. That's it. So you are going to be tabling at Toronto Comic Con. So I was wondering if you could sort of explain or showcase what you'll have at your table. I'll have my latest issue of the Wormhole Club Tragedy. So back in January, issue three came out. Um, so far, it has sold out Uh once at the Hero's Tale comic shop in, in Cambridge, Ontario, and uh, new issues have been restocked in the Studio Comics Press and Kitchener's carrying them as well. So I will have all three books with me at Toronto Comic Con, as well as um, Gehenna Death Valley, of course. And it just occurred to me this year that this year is the 10th anniversary of issue one of Gehenna wow. Death Valley. So I'm just thinking, what am I going to do <laughs> for that one this year? Wow, well, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time terrific. flies. That's there you sure. go. It does. Yeah. It does. So uh, definitely um, some good fo- uh, projects you've got there. But I'm wondering if there's anything down the road that you can talk about. Anything on your drawing table, so to speak? I think I can talk about it. I haven't been told not to, but um, I did a cover art for Rebel Girls issue one. I was one of the very end cover artists for Rebel Girls, released from Keen Spot Comics, and I'm currently working on a variant for issue four. So I hope to reveal that soon and um, I'm working. I'll be having a short story going into the next Cauldron. Um, Cauldron just wrapped up their Kickstarter for their hardcover collection, which I'm very happy for all of for the guys there and it's being released through Rate Press and they overfunded. I'm really happy for them. Oh, wow. So after, yeah. So after the hardcover, um, I should have a story in the next one. So I'm really excited right. about this anthology and it's Absolutely. something a bit different like still in the horror realm but more sci-fi fantasy thing but it fits the theme of cauldron so, sure yeah, yeah. yeah did you hear um someone is bringing back ec comics you know the old one from like the 50s i did i think it's omni press if yeah. i'm not mistaken yeah i, I was so. Yeah. so excited to hear about <laughs> that so yeah yeah hope more of that and i'm really excited toronto comic-con now i had a long pause about what am I reading lately? And of course I remember it now dwellings by Jay Stevens. Oh yeah. I'm in love with it. I only have one issue of it so far and I hope to collect all of them <laughs> in that Toronto comic con. I'm so excited to meet him and buy more books. Like whenever I go to the comic shop here, there's no other issues there. <laughs> They're just sold out. So, so that's what I've been reading lately and just fallen in love with with that series so yeah it's very unique i tell you unique style it's uh, subversive i guess is the way you could call it right yeah i love the art style i love the stories like everything about it is it's to me it's perfection so yeah there you go now speaking of art i'd like to know what is your go-to tool for creating art these days uh lately it's my ipad pro and the program is procreate yeah lately i've been drawing my comics on there because well in theory it's supposed to be faster (laughs) Just well, that way I miss skip the step of just uh, scanning paper and then you know stitching it together in Photoshop and whatever. Where everything here on my iPad is all on a bunch of layers, and I can just get it in one go. But yeah, I still work traditionally from time to time. But yeah, for sequentials lately, it's been digital and Procreate um, mainly. It's the um, most intuitive program, and also it's. Uh, highly ethical and very friendly to artists since they're against AI generated images. So yes, good to know. Very important these days. You don't know, like some application vendors are pulling the rug from under your feet when they say, yeah. Oh yeah, you like your, you like your application. Well, now we're going to put some AI in there and it's like, what? No, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm yeah. glad that they're sticking with it. So that's good. That's a good relief. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. So at the Toronto Comic Con, as a, in most cons, you get a lot of people that come up to your table and some actually say they're making their own comic book and they ask for advice. What would be one piece of advice that you pass along to someone who could potentially come up to your table during Comic Con? What would you say to them? Just keep making comics. I mean, it's a generic advice, but really it's like just once you start, just keep doing it. 
even when the self-doubt comes in and there'll be many soul-crushing self-doubt moments as you go through making your comic, but just, just do it, you know, like, trust me, getting the thing finished, getting the comics finished is a set, hugely satisfying feeling, you know, and you'll feel good. Even if you're worried if your story is garbage, like you finish something. Okay. No, that's good advice for sure. Yeah. Get her done. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So with all the stuff that you've got on the go today and in the future, where do you recommend that people go online to find out more about you? Um, just check out my website, thebecca.com, and like uh, you can see like where I am online and what events I'm going to and where my socials are and all that stuff. Great. Well, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering, is there something I didn't ask that you'd like to get across in this interview? March, April. I'm pretty busy for events, so come see me. Um, I'm at a couple of local spots this month at a movie market, a punk rock market, and then Toronto Comic Con. Uh, April is the Hero's Tale one-year anniversary in Cambridge. So if you're in the area, come on down and uh, celebrate another comic shop in their first year anniversary of business. You know, especially when it's like difficult to have a shop these days for or a comic shop these days and uh, they made it for the first year. So, yay. Thanks to the Becca for the chat. You can discover more about the Becca online at thebecca.com. And that's T-H-E-B-E-C-K-A dot com. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts. And don't forget to check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website. True North Country Comics is on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel and hit the notification button. You can follow along at True North Country Comics on most social media sites. Remember, you can send any and all feedback to John at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast at Copyright True North Country Comics, Copyright 2024.